Today, we are going to discuss the power of the P. That's right. We're going to discuss the power of planning. That's the P you were thinking about, right? Anyway, let's talk a little bit about planning. Because, you know, when I was in high school, uh, one of the things that my high school teacher used to always tell me was, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Or you could say it the other way. Proper planning prevents poor performance. And you know, when I was young and, you know, fooling around and not really caring much about my success and my education, I really didn't wonder too much what that meant. I didn't understand what that meant. But as I actually started to try to excel in my life and actually do and take on big projects that required a lot of planning, I came to know the wisdom and the understanding behind it. So, you know, for most of the success that you want out of life, for most of us, we want big things, right? And in order for us to accomplish big things, it's going to require some level of planning. Now, you might be asking me, okay, well, what's the point of planning? How much should I plan? What happens if I don't plan and just go straight into something? We're going to touch on all of those things today. So let's get right into it. Let's discuss the power of planning. So the reason why planning is so important, for one, is because it puts your thoughts down uh, on paper. You know, And the reason why that's so important is because uh, it gives, uh, for one, a certain level of reality to what you're doing. So we can write that down. Uh, as one of the benefits of planning, right? Um, it makes it real, right? So, um, because of the fact that it makes it real with you writing it down, it gives you a little bit more accountability. It makes you want to strive a little bit harder now that it's written down because it's something that's keeping you focused and keeping you anchored every single day. You know, so everybody has a lot of thoughts and dreams and ideas, but when things are stored in your mind, a lot of times we tend to forget things. So one of the reasons why it's so important to plan is because, you know, you can have a really novel idea or you can have, you know, a well thought out plan, but the minute that you're disrupted by something else happening, you could forget half of what you were already thinking about. You could forget that this idea even exists. So for one, it makes it real, right? And then secondly, um, it also provides the steps. I'll say that this is one of the biggest things uh, that I think is the reasons why written goals are so important, you know, and planning is so important in general. A lot of times when you're thinking about something in your head, it seems really easy in your head, but then you get the real deal once you put it down on paper. So I'll give you a prime example. Let's say that you have a goal of, um, you know, maybe you're looking to start up a new company, or maybe you have a goal of, uh, I don't know, quitting your cur current job, finding a new job. You know, and when you're thinking about it in your head, everything is easy as one, two, three, right? Everything is simple as, okay, I go before the boss, I say I quit, and then I'm off to the next job. But then obviously there's so many more steps that's involved in reality, right? In theory, things are just as simple as you think it and then it happens, but then in practice it's, okay, what are all the steps that leads to getting this done? You know, the second reason why it's so important for you to plan is because it provides the steps. Uh, the steps are critical because the steps give you deadlines. And that, again, is one of the reasons why planning is so important. You know, uh, when I was working in corporate America, I was working as an IT project manager. Uh, and one of the things that was most important for those of us that became not only project managers, but certified project management professionals, PMPs, they call it. One of the most critical things that you have to understand in any project is project planning is all about how much time you have, the size and scope of the project, you know, and what type of resources that you have, like cost, right? So 
likewise, you want to think about that for yourself. That's one of the reasons why it's so important to actually have plans and have written plans because it gives you deadlines on when to follow and complete each step. It gives you an idea on how big the step is because, again, you might be um, basically downplaying it in your mind, right? You might be underestimating how long something takes in your mind, but now that you have it written out, you kind of have a better estimate on how things will go. And then you also know your resources, right? So that's another reason why the planning is so important. Um, going back to the first one, keeps it real. When it makes it real for you by having it on paper, remember how I said it keeps you accountable? Well, when you have these deadlines, imagine the fact that you know you wake up every single day and you're looking at your planning on paper and then you're always constantly reminding yourself of the things that you committed to reaching by certain deadlines. Now, wouldn't that help you a lot more than just you know waking up one day and thinking about your big goals or your big dreams one day, but your mind is totally somewhere else every other day of the week, right? The person that has all of these things written down, nine times out of 10, I would say there's a 98% chance that they're always gonna be that much more effective and successful at what they're doing than the person that's just thinking it in their head, right? So that's one of the reasons why the power of planning is so important. Now, um, let's look at this on the flip side. What happens now if you choose not to plan? Because, you know, one of the famous sayings that I heard was, uh, if you fail to plan, you'll plan to fail, right? So by you failing to plan, by you not having things written out, what happens when, you know, um, maybe the idea that you thought that seemed so good in your head Maybe when you actually go through the actual steps behind it, you realize, you know what, maybe this isn't exactly what I wanted to do anyway. Maybe this isn't exactly uh, how I envisioned it in my dream. See, um, when you can simulate what you're about to get yourself into via planning and written mapping, it takes away from the trial and error aspect of going into something making a mistake and dealing with all the pains that are involved from that. So, you know, one of the downsides, I would say, um, of not having a written plan is overuse of trial and error, right? Because you're a lot more likely to make an error or you're more likely to err in your decision making if it's not already planned out. That was one of, even one of the things that Napoleon Hill was saying uh, in his book, Think and Grow Rich. I mean, this is one of the most famous books that has been ever written. He says in that book that those who visualize and can look through the problem before they get there, those that envision it every single day, uh, they're much more likely to achieve the success. That's the reason why when you look at a lot of top performers, they usually will either go through rehearsals, visualizations, you know, some type of practice in training where they're simulating what happens before they actually find themselves in the exact situation. So, you know, when you are not planning and you just try to go into it head first, not know what you're getting yourself into, you're losing a lot of time. And then you could be erring in things that could be a lot more fatal. Like you could get yourself into a situation where, you know, you end up hurting yourself. You know, imagine if you were trying a stunt or imagine if you were trying something that required some type of physical activity. And without any research, without any planning, without any preparation on your end, you just went headfirst into it. And then because of the fact that it didn't work 100 percent ideally, you find yourself injured. You find yourself going to the hospital. You find yourself sick. Think about how much time now, think about how much money it's going to take you to recover from that healing if you go to the hospital. Think about how much time it's going to take you to recover from whatever injury you sustain. All of that could have been prevented simply if you had planned, right? So that's just one example, but there's many downsides of poor planning, you know? 
Um, one thing that I do want to say is, even if you do have a plan, it's important now to understand that even the best laid plans that you have are subject to change, right? And so a lot of times when you are planning, one of the benefits of planning is that it gives you the opportunity to consider multiple scenarios, right? If you're just thinking about something in your head, chances are you're not thinking about the situation as extensively as if you actually had it mapped down on paper where you're actually looking at the different circumstances that could come along the way if you found yourself knee deep in the situation, right? And again, why is that better than not having a plan at all? Because, you know, you get yourself in a situation that you hadn't considered and a lot of times that can be very negative. Right. So these are all of the benefits at a high level of planning. But let's talk about now what happens if you are planning for a situation and, you know, maybe you come to realize that maybe your plan is not going to work exactly how you want it to work. Right. So a lot of times in your plans, it's always best to have a buffer right? Or buffering. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that you are planning um, to go, I don't know, to a meeting or you're planning to go to see somebody important, right? And you know that you need to be there at seven o'clock, 7 p.m. Let's say. Don't plan to get there at seven o'clock on the dot. Maybe you should get that. Maybe you should plan to get there by 6.30. You should create a 30 minute buffer, right? Because what happens if there's a bad traffic jam on the way to going to where you need to be? What happens if, you know, you get an important phone call and you find yourself distracted? You know, when you don't allocate for any unexpected occurrences to happen in your planning, that's not good planning. Because remember, what's the adage? Proper planning prevents poor performance. So one of the things that you need to have is a buffer. Now, if you can help it, I would recommend a buffer of 50% when it comes to things like time, at least on time, right? So say, again, you need to be somewhere and, you know, uh, you say, okay, I need to be somewhere. Maybe it's a 30-minute drive to get there, right? Right? Don't leave 30 minutes right before you go on the 30 minute drive because you're at the mercy of whatever is happening on the street. <laughs> what, if that, what if the road is blocked off somewhere to be able to get to a highway or, you know, you catch a flat? If you're not giving yourself any type of buffer, guess what's going to happen? You're going to show up late. You're going to make a horrible impression. Things might not work well for you in business that way. You know, there's this whole host, this whole legion of negative consequences that can come your way. So you always want to consider your buffer, even when it comes to things like cost. You know what I mean? Like um, when it comes to your budget, if you want to be able to make sure that you meet your budget, sometimes it's not always good to say, OK, um, I'm only going to spend $100 on gas. Sometimes it's good to say, okay, I maybe need to set aside $150 for gas just in case I need to spend more money on it or in case something extra comes up. You know, there's so many times uh, throughout the course of a day, a month, a year, etc., where we are prone to find ourselves in the middle of all of these unforeseen circumstances. You know, Mike Tyson said it best. He said, Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, <laughs> you know, because the minute that he put that punch on you, it it will switch around the game plan. You know, you can practice, you can prepare, you can train all day. But if you are not actually coming up with a game plan that is already adjusted and allocated for the emergencies that can come up along the way, you're not really doing good planning. So always think about having a buffer. We've talked about having a written plan. We've also talked about having a buffer. The next thing I want to talk a little bit about is 
uh, mapping, right? So mapping or action planning, right? So you might be asking, okay, Urban Money Manager, I hear you, I know I need a plan. How do I do it? Can you show me how I properly plan? Sure. So um, let's say, for example, that you decide um, that you want to get a new job, let's say, right? So let's say here that the goal is get a new job. This becomes the goal. The goals must be met with actions, right? So not only are we going to start from here, but along with this get a new job piece, we need to first have the deadline. Remember how I said that from the previous page? We need to have the deadline because, you know, your goals without a deadline is just a wish. And we're not in the business of wishing we had a new job or wishing we had a new career. We actually want to get that done. So now we're creating the action plan. We're putting mapping in place on how to accomplish that. So, you know, let's just put like some random date. Like say, for example, you want to get a job, let's say by July 31st, right? Let's just say that. When you're coming up with your action plan, you want to be very clear about the goal. And then you want to be very clear about the deadline to which you have to reach that goal. But it's not enough to just put down what your goal is. Now you need to know all of the steps that are going to go into reaching that goal. So, you know, obviously, if you're going to get a new job, maybe at a minimum, you're going to need to dust off your resume. Right. So maybe you need to list as one task. Right. Maybe you need to have like a task list. Right. What are all of the tasks that goes into getting a new job? Maybe one task is, you know, working on resume. Right work on resume, you know, and just brainstorm, you know, what's the next task? Uh, think about, I don't know, um, get resume paper. You know, another task might be, uh, you know, maybe speak with someone that is in your network that has certain job opportunities, right? Maybe you need to do certain networking or maybe attend a certain networking event, maybe attend a certain job fair that you've been planning on. Whatever it is, just write it down. So we'll do another example. So we'll put here, go to job fair, right? So the list goes on forever and ever, right? You need, But you need to write down here, very critically, you need to write down all of the steps, write down all of the steps that gets you to where you need to be, right? And then after you've come out with the full list now, because remember, when you just thought about this as just as a good idea, your brain was not open to all of the possibilities of what needed to be done to be able to get to this big goal. You were only thinking about the big goal, but you were not thinking about the subtasks that were required to get to the bigger goal, right? So now that you are thinking about, okay, what is every single step that goes into it? The next thing that you do is you create deadlines around these tasks, right? So if you're thinking about a July 1 date, I got to have this new job by then. The office got to be in my hand. I got to be ready to step in the office by July 31st, whatever the case may be. That means you have to come back now to this task list and be able to say, okay, when it comes to working on the resume, you know, maybe I need to have that done, I don't know, maybe in April. Maybe I need to have that done at the beginning of June. You know, maybe I need to go to the job fair at the beginning of July. You know what I mean? Based upon your series of tasks, you need to be able to write down deadlines on how these tasks basically coincide with the bigger goal. And then you need to also map it out. So again, you know, if you know that you need to get a new, in order to get a new job, work on a new resume. So that might be the first step for you. So you could write down here, work on resume, right? So the reason why I'm putting this first and we can map it out, put it in a box 
The reason why I'm putting this first is because let's say you're somebody where, you know, you don't have a current resume and you're thinking about going to the job fair, but should you go to the job fair if you don't have a resume in hand? If you don't have, you know, your professional qualities listed on a sheet of paper or have something prepared, remember, proper preparation, proper planning, if you don't have that ready, you can't go to the job fair. So instead of just thinking about, okay, all of these lists, you know what I mean, just in whatever order, now you're actually mapping it out to where you could say, okay, in order to get the new job, I have to first work on the resume, then and only then can I get go to the fair, right? It has to go in that order. But by you actually going through the mental mapping of this, you're going to be smart enough now to know through the map that, okay, I really can't, I really can't go to the job fair that I heard about until I get the resume together. If I know that the job fair is July 5th, then that means that I need to have my resume probably done by the end of June. You know, I would set as another task, have someone proofread my resume. You see what I'm saying? These are all things that should be appropriately listed on your series of tasks. And then once you put the deadline behind these things, put it in a map. And then you just simply map out, okay, where am I here? Okay, now I've worked out the resume. Boom, done. Okay, now it's time for me to go to the job fair. Okay, I've submitted the resumes at the job fair. Okay, boom, done. Now, there's so many other steps that can lead into this, but this is just giving you an overall framework on how to take one big goal or one big aspiration and how to put it into an effective action plan. All of this comes by proper planning. I assure you, that the person that does this and goes through this level of detail is going to outbeat the person that goes into life without a plan every single time. You see what I'm saying? It's just like if two people are going to somewhere where they've never been and one of those people is driving to the destination using GPS and another person is just winging it, if you were to bet your money on who gets there first, who would you say? The person with the GPS or the person that's just going there on a hope and a prayer, right? You need a, a system of navigation. You need a roadmap to guide you from one point to the next. That's what you're getting right now through the mapping and the action planning. But like I said, you have to make sure that not only in this plan, you're putting down the appropriate dates, you need to make sure that you're including buffer time to be able to get to where you need to get, right? And when it comes to your planning, you know, one of the reasons why uh, another component of planning is so important, because when you plan, one of the things that you're also able to do is planning allows you to block out noise, right? Because again, when you are in the midst of trying to be successful, there's going to be so many things, people, situations, circumstances that's going to be competing for your time, that's going to be competing for your attention, that's going to be competing for your emotions, your energy, etc. You have to start having laser focus on what you're trying to do, right? So the minute that you put a goal in place, is going to help you be able to quickly filter out, okay, with this, goal, with this goal, with these series of tasks, with these deadlines that I now have outlined for myself, what things do I need to be focused on doing and what things should I not do, right? That's all the benefits that comes through planning. It allows you to block out noise because every single day, I guarantee you, somebody's going to call you. Somebody's going to IM you. Somebody's going to present to you their idea, their agenda, their plans. But if their plans don't coincide with your plan, then you need to know, okay, sometimes I'm going to have to decline. But you know what happens? If you have no plan put in place, guess what? You're always going to follow behind somebody else's plan. You're always going to follow behind somebody else's agenda. And somebody else's agenda may not be always the best path for yourself personally. That's why you must have a plan. 
The plan allows you to stay focused, block out noise, and get to your destinations quicker than average, right? The whole reason why I'm giving you these real life success courses all for free, so I hope you subscribe to the channel and opt in on a lot of my free videos. The reason why I'm giving you all of this free information is because I'm trying to give back to you to help you accelerate your success, right? Because success is all about having a competitive advantage over everybody else, right? Over your competition. So while everybody else is just going through life, going through the motions, you're going through life with a purpose. While everybody else is just going through life, you know, just kind of figuring things out along the way and losing time and money in the process, you're going in there with a proven strategy to be able to get from one step to the next. And guess what happens? Every single time that you take a plan like this and you put it in one component of your life, you could take that exact same strategy and put it in the next component. And you're going to be able to do this and have it completed a hell of a lot faster than nobody that has this information at all, right? So this is the video that I wanted to share with you regarding planning. There's a lot of things that I could say regarding plans, but at the basic level, you need to have one. You also need to understand that even the best laid plans oftentimes can fail, right? But does that mean don't go into it with a plan at all? Of course not, right? What that means is you need to be wise enough as you're planning that failure can happen. That means that you need to be wise enough to know, you know what, maybe if things don't go right through plan A, okay, here's the fallback plan, right? Here's the plan B. Even if I'm giving all of my energy and my dedication and my resources to plan A, it's always good to have a strategy. You know what I mean? The person that goes to battle or goes to war with a strategy is going to win, right? You have to look at your life and you have to think about yourself uh, almost like a war general because life is chess, right? So I hope that you're planning. I hope that you are preparing for the mistakes along the way and giving yourself a buffer. I hope that you're ready to go along with the bumps and blows that life has to give. But always remember, proper preparation prevents poor performance. So I will see you in the next episode of Real Life Success. Thank you.